This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strawn and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, and it's okay to say his name three times, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I hope when I die, I have a child choir singing Deo <laughs> at my funeral. Yeah, I know. That what would a be beautiful, nice. beautiful moment that it was. was. It was. It was a beautiful celebration. Beautiful celebration for an actor who is a very awful person. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say for a child <laughs> molest, for a child born at it. Yeah, so uh, if you've been listening to the platform, uh, the podcast since we started a couple of years ago, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoy it as we talk about the legacy sequel to the 1988 film Beetlejuice starring Michael Keaton, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And whether or not you are new or a regular and would like more access to the show, visit our Patreon page and become a patron of the Main Attraction Podcast. Go to patreon.com slash main attraction podcast. You can get Patreon only content. You can support us at a three, five, ten, or twenty. Dollar level, and when you join up, we'll shout you out here on the show. If you want ad free access to the podcast, any level of being a Patreon supporter will get the show ad free. Doesn't matter which level you sign up for, all four levels get to the show without commercials on the Patreon app. If you want additional bonus content, though, you will have to sign up for the five, the ten, or the twenty dollar level. For example, we just recorded a an episode on the first season of Presumed Innocent. It will come out to the masses. Uh, in the middle of around the middle beginning of October but uh, because I'll be out of town for a couple weekends in October uh, but for the for our Patreons, they get it already. They already have that sucker up and going for you guys. So, like I said, if you ever want stuff like that, if you want early access, if you want bonus episodes, things of those natures, you need to go for the five, the ten, or the twenty dollar level. Just go over to our Patreon site on Patreon.com and check us out, and you can take a look and see what suits you best. If you can't be a patron, though, you can help the show out by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcast. We would love it if you left us a five star rating on both of those platforms, if you have them both, and if you have time while you're on Apple Podcast. We would really like it if you gave us a review there. Uh, we would that would help us out a whole lot. So if you can do both those things, uh, you'd be helping us out quite a bit. If you would like to interact with the shows, you can send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any thoughts or questions you might have, anything that you might want to suggest, any uh, like I said, anything at all. Uh, if you just like to chit chat, we'd love to hear that too. So uh, send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. All right, we are discussing the newest film in theaters this weekend, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, starring Michael Keaton, uh, a few members of the original cast, and a couple of new ones. Uh, most uh, most notably, Jennifer Ortega is joining the cast of this film uh, from the previous one that was done 36 years ago. So, I'll tell you what, before we get into this one, let me apologize. Like uh, one, we didn't get a chance to record last week. We had uh, Ryan had some things to do on Sunday. I tried to go on. Monday, but I had some car issues that I had to take care of, uh, so we couldn't get going, and so we just never got around to recording, so I apologize for that, and also, the previous week, guys, uh, we are trying, still trying to do these video podcasts, we think it seems to help us at least a little bit on Spotify, and I was, I've been trying to, like, figure out the best way to do it, I did some, I tried to enhance the sound on the video, and it seemed to, like, make the sound worse, so I'm not going to do that again this week, so I won't mess up our sound like we had last week, uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this film, let's start with the original, because you both, you and I have watched the original recently, you watched a couple weeks ago, yeah. I watched it last week with my daughter and my wife, because I I want to see if my daughter would like it so that we could go see this one together. What were your, what are your general thoughts on that first one? I, I really enjoyed it. I remember liking it as a kid. And let me mention this. It took me watching this movie to watch the original and to this movie to remember, oh, yeah, Tim Burton at one point was one of my favorite directors. Yeah, he was really good at one time. Because, mm -hmm. like, Pee-wee's Big Adventure was a humongous movie for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I have seen that so many times. Yes, I'm one of those annoying people that went to the Alamo and asked where the basement was. <laughs> <laughs> where the lady was like, somebody's watched Pee-wee's Big Adventure recently. <laughs> I was right. like, yes, guilty, I mean. guilty. And then, like, you know, loved, loved Beetlejuice. I will say when I watched it again, I was like, 
And I don't remember if it's been, you know, it's 30 something years old. I was like, God, it's been a long time since I've seen this because right. I didn't remember a lot of it at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one thing that really stands out, and I've seen some, I've seen some complaints about the second one. People don't realize how little Beetlejuice is in these yes. movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, and right. that was, and it really stands out in the first one because oh, yeah. I don't think it comes on till like 30, 45 minutes in. Yeah, I don't remember how long it is. I, I don't remember how far into the film it is before he shows up. I did Google how often, how much of the film is he actually in, how much screen time he actually gets, and it's 17 minutes. It's an hour and a half film, and he is only in on screen for 17 minutes of the entire film. He he felt like he was in it more on the second Yeah, movie. I got the same feeling. Uh, he's not yeah. in it... He's not in it all the time like you might expect, but he's, I right. feel like he was in it more in, in this one. Yeah. yeah. But, again, I remember really loving this movie, and then I remember really loving Tim Burton's work, because mm -hmm. after this was Bat the Batman movies, mm -hmm. and then I loved Sleepy Hollow, uh, and, uh, God, what a big fish. Big fish. Mm -hmm. And then he's, and uh, Edward Scissorhands, and then he started working with Johnny Depp, and every movie was the same, it felt like, and I have quit watching his work yeah the last thing i remember watching was dark shadows and i hated that movie and uh but like i was kind of interested i was like oh, yeah i used to love tim burton and and going back to your main question i watched the first one again excuse me a couple weeks ago i was like god this is fun this is a this is horror this is comedy done perfectly yeah this is i watched the first one like i said we pulled it up on HBO Max or just Max, whatever we call it. We pulled it up on Max last Friday night to watch it with my daughter because I thought she would like it. I kind of have a... She likes Jenna Ortega. She 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 watched the show Wednesday like 50 times. Yeah. Uh, so. I remember you mentioned it. <laughs> uh, so she, she loves Jenna Ortega. Bring her into this film. She also kind of likes scary movies. Uh, so I was like, I really think you would like this film. So when the sequel is coming out next week, why don't we watch it and see if you if you like this one? We'll go see the sequel together. My wife is very indifferent on the film. She watched it with us just because it was something my daughter wanted to do. Uh, she, yeah. but she's like whatever. I could live or li I could live fine with this movie. I could live fine without it. But um, so we watched it, and you're right. There was a lot of things I didn't remember. I didn't remember Michael Keaton being on the being on the screen as little as he is right he because he's on the he's barely on there yeah. at all. like that 17 minutes Alec out of baldwin gina davis and juanetta rodder are the stars of the movie yeah they are uh it, but it's it's titled Beetlejuice just because he's the one who owns right. the film yeah. i mean once it gets going you're yeah. like oh yeah this is the reason why this oh, he this film is called Beetlejuice. um my daughter really enjoyed it it's really weird i was about to say yeah it's really weird to watch Oh, it's it's fun. It don't even, uh, weird is probably not a good word. It's really fun to watch some of these things from our childhood with uh, my daughter with my son. I can't. My son is just he won't watch hardly anything. He's all golf. He'll watch Marvel stuff, but that's it. He won't catch anything else. My daughter is much more. You know, if I can find something I think she'll like, she'll definitely sit down and and, and watch it. Uh, but it's really interesting because you know at the end of the first one, you know. Tim, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis's characters, they're getting turned into, uh, they're losing their soul or whatever it is. I don't remember exactly what it is that causes them to almost die. But, you know, I've seen this movie enough because I probably watched it 10 or 15 times from the time it came out on VHS until oh, yeah. like 1994 or something like that. Um, right. But, so I've seen it a ton. So, I, you know, the, the suspense of are they going to be saved or not is like completely right. gone for me. Yeah. But we're sitting there watching that and all of a sudden my daughter just in the middle of that scene goes, he needs to hurry up. <laughs> my wife was like, <laughs> my wife was kind of like tuning in and out. She's on her phone and yeah. she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, she's talking about Beetlejuice saving the two characters on screen. She's like, oh, okay. So like I said, it was, it was yeah. just kind of interesting well, to, to see that. It, and the fun thing about the first movie, especially watching it now, because you've got M Michael Keaton is on the way to super. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Like he had started in the early 80s. He broke out with Night Shift, Mr. Mom. Right. And he's just working his way up. And like he's about to really take off with this and Batman. And then you've got Gina Davis and Alan Baldwin that are like. You know, people in their thirties that are finally getting a good right. bre some breaks. You know, I think Gina Davis had just done uh, the Fly, so she's yeah. really taken off. Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin goes from this to like Hunt Red from Red October. Mm -hmm. He really skyrockets. 
And then you have Winona Ryder, who's so good in both movies. I'm going to say that now. Like, you see this kid who's like, God, they got so lucky that she was the cast of this, yeah. and she's so good. And then also, and the person who really takes over, who's really good in this movie, Catherine O'Hara, who is, you know, SCTV, you know, comedy right. icon, is also, you know, one of the background characters, and is so funny. And then Jeffrey Jones, who we did talk about, is coming off Ferris Bueller, so right. everyone knows who Mr. Rooney is. So, and I can see where your kids may like this, too, if they've watched Stranger Things, you got Winona Ryder. Yeah. Catherine O'Hara is has quite a fan base because of Home Alone, right. and not to mention Shit's Creek. Right. So you, she's really known for you know for younger people probably because of that stuff. Yeah, she she is. I think she's known pretty well for especially for Home Alone. Most kids even today yeah. have seen Home Alone. Uh, right, right. Kind of going back to what you're talking about with Tim Burton. Tim Burton. It's interesting because. A lot of stuff he gets he has done has often been labeled like horror comedy. This is labeled horror yeah. comedy. I've always like labeled it more like horror adjacent. It's really weird. Like with Tim Burton, and I'm like the perfect example of this. I'm with Tim Burton, like for ninety percent of the people out there, it's not scary. I mean, like there are some weird, yeah. scary things like in the original one when Gene Davis's character like rips her face off. That's a scary thing, right. but it's like it's not that scary. It's just kind of more gross than anything. Yeah. It's more surprising. But like, once you get to a certain age, you don't get scared by Tim Burton. Uh, but like I said, I'm a perfect example of this because 1986, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure comes out. My mom takes me to it, and I'm enjoying it for the most part. And then Large Marge comes on. I was about to say Large Marge. I was done. I was done. I was like, nope. Uh, I'm out of here. We got to go, Mom. Sorry. We're not doing this. Uh, and then two years later, Beatles comes out. I'm nine years old, so I was seven when... Pee Wee's Big Adventure comes out. I'm nine when this comes out, and this didn't bother me at all. So, like I said, it's. Did you go back and watch? I Pee-wee's never went back and watched it. I've never gone back and watched it. Mm-mm. Pee Wee's Big Adventure is one of those movies I watched a thousand times. Yeah, I mean, which is so weird to think about. Like when you think about stuff in your childhood, we're watching a thirty. Our parents let us right. watch this thirty-some-year-old weirdo that's right. like a child. Looks like a child molester. <laughs> Entertaining kids. It's yeah. bizarre that he was huge for children. Because Pee Wee's Playhouse was a big thing for yeah, kids. Yeah, oh, I watched you that did. a ton. I, yeah, I watched that Me all the time. Mm-hmm. I can yeah. still remember. Make a look at high, make a high, you <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so like I said, Tim Burton, he's just kind of, he, that's kind of the way he is. Like, once you get to a certain point, he doesn't scare anymore. But you're yeah. right. He got to a point where he just started making all these kind of like big budget films, and he kind of lost it. Uh, it was Anytime it was him, Johnny Depp, and Helena Bottom Carter, I was like, God, they all look the same. Yeah, they do. So, uh, and they're just they're, a lot of the films just aren't that good. And Which is weird because he got away with working with Devito and Michael Keaton and Wynonna Ryder. writer. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just weird. But this is, I think, a little is it more of a return to form. What are your general thoughts on the new one before we get into it? So I'd heard that this was tracking really well, and the early reviews were good. And then I heard some people were like, I saw some people online were like, that's fine. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. And then I went and watched it. I loved it. I had a great time. My theater was cracking up the whole time. You know, Justin, this has been a fun summer movie. Since yeah, that's we me. haven't had the, the quantity that right. we, we normally have. But the quality has been there, and we've been getting these over and over. And it, I feel like I did with Twisters. They're starting another story that I loved over again, right. and just adding to it. And it is so much fun. I laughed. Jenna Ortega is a perfect person to bring in this. Winona Ryder was fantastic. Catherine O'Hara, I, I think uh, Cousin Blake in the Patreon said it best. She is a treasure. Mm. And Michael Keaton, man, I love Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton was definitely one of my favorite actors because Mr. Mom was a movie. If I went back and looked at movies as a kid that I watched the most on VHS, it's top five because right. that was an early one. And I have loved Michael Keaton since that moment. I've we hated that he went away for so long and I just so glad he's back and I love this movie yeah I really enjoyed this movie I thought it was really good I laughed a lot it was there was a yeah. n- numerous funny moments throughout the course of it yeah I do have one big issue that keeps it from 
this movie could have been like one of my top five, top three films of the year. It's going more towards mm-hmm. the back end of the top ten for one yeah. big reason, and that big reason is Tim Burton. My goodness, pick a movie you want to make. All right, he feels yeah. like he's making two movies yeah. in this, and that, like I said. And one of them just is kind of completely uninteresting, and the other one is incredibly interesting. So this, and what I'm talking about is the plot with Dolores and Monica Bellucci. That was the part. Yeah. And I, and I, the, her can, can I guess who Monica Bellucci is? I dating? know that's what we're getting to. So Tim Burton so does I, this a lot. Elena Bonham Carter is not in this movie because they're no longer they're together. no longer together. He's dating Monica Bellucci. Yes. Look, the, the introduction of Dolores was fantastic. Uh, when yeah, yeah. she felt like when Danny DeVito, which I was shocked. My, did your theater react to Danny DeVito at all in in this? Like, did they? People have, were happy to see him. Yeah, mine yeah. was like dead silent. I was like, that's. I was like, that's Danny DeVito. I'm like, I'm the only uh, looking around. I'm the only person like well, who's it, noticing it this. It reminded <laughs> me too. It's like, oh yeah, he's he's in a lot of Burton stuff. Yeah, he is. So, uh, but anyway, when he knocks over, when he's playing the janitor and he knocks over those boxes and her body parts come falling out, her introduction is phenomenal. The way she's stapling yeah, her body yeah. together, that looked great. It was fun. It was funny. I was yeah. like, okay, this is going to be a great character. This is going to be a great villain because I didn't know anything coming into this how what the setup of it was or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, so I was like, okay, she's going to be fantastic, and she doesn't really do anything in this. She like just kind of like stalks around yeah. the, the 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 halls and all this type of stuff, right? And it wastes a whole lot of time that they could have spent with the other actual main story of this with. Jenna yeah. Ortega and with this new kid who's only done one other thing. What is his name again? Man, he was good. Arthur Conti. Uh, who plays Jeremy? Uh, they could have spent a lot. They could have just spent yeah. more time fleshing that out. And that's one of the other things about the first one. The first one, the story makes absolutely no sense. It makes, but it, right. but it, is, it really does. It, it really is does. all vibes. It, that's that's what that yeah. film is. It's all vibes because the story makes yeah. no sense. Uh, and like, there's even a point like when we get to that end. Like, I remembered the whole "I've got to marry somebody to yeah, come into I, the world." I kind of remember that too. And I like I thought they like explained it really well. No, they don't. And, like even Michael Keaton's character at one point says, "You know, I don't really make the rules. I don't even understand the rules." But that's the rule. Like, so he's like referencing the fact that there's this is the first time we're bringing up this marriage subplot in it. Uh, but they could have actually fleshed out that story a little bit better, and they could have actually done more with those characters. I would have loved to spend yeah. more time with them, but we're yeah. getting this Monica Bellucci thing because she dates Tim Burton. He puts the people that he dates or he's married to into his films, and it was just a complete and total waste. The rest of the story, I loved. I thought it was great. Yeah. What, are your, what were your thoughts about the whole Monica yeah, Bellucci same thing? same thing. I, I thought, again, fantastic introduction. I didn't mind at first that she's looking for Beetlejuice. No, I didn't mind but at then, first. Like you mm-hmm. said, I, I do think it was too much of a distraction, and it it really makes no sense because really William Defoe as Wolf Jackson, who was hilarious, yes, it was. Him being involved could have been besides Jeremy Arthur Conte as the villain. William Defoe getting involved, yeah, you know, from time to time is all you needed, right. He's the one who should be chasing them, not you know, not Dolores. So you didn't even need that character. No, you didn't. You had Wolf Jackson right there. You had him right there, and they any screen time that they give to Dolores in this. Look, it's not Monica Bellucci's fault. It's a really, it's just a it really is. poorly developed role. It's a really, it's yeah. it feels like it's crammed in there. Look, I will say this: if they had decided that they wanted to revolve this story around Dolores and her hunt for, for Beetlejuice because of the fact that he killed her and all this type of stuff. That could have been a really good movie. That really could have been a fantastic that movie. That could have been the whole movie. Yeah. But like I said, there's basically two separate plots going on here. And because the one that right. involves Jeremy and Astrid, and that involves everybody in the movie, that feels like very much the primary plot. And that's very much the other one is very much the B plot. And the B plot is just not interesting. Like I said, right. it's the complete opposite of the problem that the first one had. The first one, right. if you want to criticize the first one, it didn't really have a plot to, whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, like I said, I, I love the first one. It's one of my favorites of all time. So Yeah, and, and also, you know, and let me show him out justin thoreau was hilarious That's I, got, I, wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan of that part i, I was really yeah, he was, i think you could have you could have made him the villain you could have. okay yeah you could have and that's another thing like i said the, again this kind of goes back into they're spending too much time with dolores they 
they could have developed Justin Thoreau's character a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, they could have done more with that because I, I was just the one thing that I've I struggled with Justin Thoreau's character. He felt very much like a caricature of the real life people. The real life people in the original one, they're they feel like actual human beings, and he felt yeah. like just a caricature right. of what they were trying to go yeah. for on that. So that's that was kind yeah. of my thing that so I bumped up against you- him. Why do you think they didn't bring back Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin? Do you think because they would have had to do their the? It would have been a lot of work because you've got to have them as young people. Yeah, they, you would have had done a ton of de aging. You would have had to done, done a ton of stuff like that. You because you have you would have had to make them look exactly like they did in that first one. That would right. have been just you can do de aging. You a can do it. A lot of money, but it's a lot of money, and also it's just. Everybody knows. I mean, that their look was so unique, and it stood out so much. Right. I mean, that dress that she wore. That I mean, Alec Baldwin looks like a male model in that. In, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen him look that way in any other film that he has ever done. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so trying to capture that would have been really, really difficult. But like when we were watching the first one, it took. 45 minutes for my wife to realize, oh, I forgot that's Alec Baldwin. I mean, that's how much yeah, different he, does, t- he, he looks. looks nothing like you like you think he was, you know, especially today, but yeah. even, you know, like, you know, a few years later he doesn't look that way. I, that's, that's what um, I, I kind of think is they yeah. just couldn't I kinda, they couldn't capture that. I, I know they claimed they weren't in it and I was like, all right, they're going to show up some point but then they did write like immediately they're like oh yeah they're gone yeah, yeah we found we found, found a loophole, loophole. That's, like, okay yeah they they, they just explain away really quick and easily so uh all right tell you what let's uh let's take a break and then we'll talk about some specifics of the film So let's go ahead and get into, like I said, the specifics of this. Uh, the setup of the story, it's, look, they're doing what all of these legacy sequels are doing nowadays. You know, they're they're going back and they're playing the hits. So the, the very opening scene of this, you've got them flying over the town of Connecticut. And eventually, the, the we assume, it, it feels like this, and I think they do the same thing, where the, yeah. they, stop doing the, they stop doing the actual town and they do the miniature and they fly into the to the house and you see Lydia talking. She's got the miniature in the background uh, and you don't really know what's going on. And when Underwriter is sitting there talking, then you realize that she's actually on the set of a television show where she has basically used her experiences as a person who can see ghosts and she has turned that into she's she's basically used it to, to gain fame as this ghost talker. What's the name of the show that she was in? I forget. Uh, I, don't I don't remember. It doesn't really not matter that much. But nevertheless, yeah. uh, she goes and she like tries to help people like get rid of the ghosts in their in their homes and or whatever. Uh, what are we thought? What are your thoughts about Lydia? I know you kind of already talked a little bit about this, but what are your thoughts about Lydia yeah. and Winona Ryder? And Winona Ryder, you know went right back to that character like she had uh, just aged a few years right i thought she was great i love the int- like the same hairstyle the same yeah. dress you know i love that and so it was really good i like how she's seeing beetlejuice and she's freaking out then right. like of course she's a drug addict you yeah. know <laughs> so that like that made sense that that character so i love her introduction and then we get Catherine o'hara like immediately you know, in that, and I like how they're friends. They've have become friends, sort of, kind of. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, as much as they yeah. can be, mm-hmm. as you know, with your stepmom. And then, because uh, uh, I love how Delia now is an artist, and she has something that is involving crows. Which, if you've watched Shit's Creek, Catherine O'Hare's character on there is famous for being these movies involving crows. Oh, so right, that okay. has, I haven't seen Shit's you know, That was hilarious. Yeah. That, that Oh, man, y'all would love Shit's Creek. You should watch that. It's fantastic. <laughs> so uh, I, I just love that that was you know, part of her part, too. Yeah, I liked Lydia Dietz. I I like her better as a teenager. I will say this. I think that I think the oh, character yeah, works much sure. better as Absolutely. a teenager. Ghost House is the show. Ghost House, thank you. Uh, but yeah, I liked her. I like the character better as a teenager. I think one underwriter does a perfectly fine job in this. I like yeah. that. That's just this character as 
a mom it doesn't work quite as well for me as the character does as an angsty teenager. I thought that it, of course. it yeah. I but, thought she did a good job. Yeah, I thought she did a fine job. I mean, I don't have any real complaints for this. The person who I wasn't really sure about because I like said I haven't seen her in a whole lot, but recently that really surprised me is Catherine O'Hara. She was phenomenal in this. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, she, she made me laugh just about every time yeah. that I'll she. I'll tell you, man, you've, you're missing out what not seeing Shit's Creek because she's, you know, one of the leads of right. that and she is hysterical. Yeah, so she's absolutely hysterical throughout the course of this. Yeah, she, I, I laugh so much with her. She went straight back to Delia and it was, yeah. I mean, she's basically doing the exact same thing that she was doing 36 yeah. years ago with that character and this was absolutely amazing. Now, so if you're wondering why we're doing a claymation version of Jeffrey Jones and why, uh, Charles is not with the cast. If you if you weren't aware of this, back in two thousand four, I think is when it was somewhere around there. It was somewhere in that area, yeah. uh, two thousand two thousand four, somewhere in that time frame. Jeffrey Jones is caught paying a young boy of about thirteen or fourteen years old to pose for lewd photographs for him. Uh, he is sentenced for child pornography and for obtaining child pornography. He's put on the register, sex registry for life. He's then arrested later on, like maybe four or five years later, because he's not he doesn't keep up with his he doesn't properly update his registry his registration as being a child sex offender. Um, so the man is never going to work in Hollywood again. So they basically yeah. what I, I will say this one of the things that I like is they can't use him. There's just no way that you can right, pull Jeffrey Jones right. back into this. So we're still going to make him a significant part of our story because like this is like what brings the entire family together. And but we're just not going to include him. We're going to find these ways to get him out of the story. And the shark attack where he's half of a body. Hilarious! <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, it's great. So, yeah. uh, like I said, that was just absolutely fantastic. I, I, I loved that aspect of of this film is the way that they were using that character without actually using him throughout the course of this. I do wonder if they had to pay him at all for the picture that he had on the grave or if they had to, if they had to do anything they like that to, for it. Yeah. But, but it's, um, you had to at least acknowledge the character in some way. So like I said, I'm, I'm, I was all about that. So, um, anyway, so we also meet, Early on, we do meet the new character to this. Uh, this is Astrid Dietz, played by Jenna Ortega. And look, this is... I don't know. Jenna Ortega is like 21, 22, 23, something like that. Yeah. But yeah. she plays an angsty teenager so incredibly well. Uh, she's great in this role. What were your thoughts about Jenna? Yeah. She's so good, man. And I feel so bad for her. Because I was thinking she was late 20s. And I was like, this girl's never going to get out of... of portraying a teen because she just looks she so looks young. young yeah she does but then i saw she's 21 i was like oh good good she's still young yeah she's still young mm -hmm. I, I love her so much no one plays hanks better i mean you could have said her mother that wanted to ride her you know 30 years ago right. but i even did i think jenna ortega is better at it she's just so good as a team that's you know emo that you do not want to mess with right and jenna ortega first she teamed up with with tim burton to make the first tim burton directed the first four episodes of wednesday and if you go back and watch wednesdays those are, those are by far the four best episodes of, of yeah. that show uh so tim burton has worked with her and she he knows her and look it's worked out really really well because if you want to tell me that one jenna ortega is like the secret daughter of one owner rider i would believe it uh, i know i know uh so like i said that works really really well in, the, in throughout the course of this film well yeah and also i know what we talked about when this movie was was you know announced they were like hey we're making beetlejuice too and we're on jenna ortega we're like of course you are yeah of course you are because it's perfect it's absolutely it's an absolutely perfect edition and it works she works incredibly well in this and yeah. uh, like i said she's she's going to be an absolute star uh she's still got oh, probably yeah. a few more years to go before she can like really hit the star jackpot on this, but she's absolutely, right. she, she's already starting to blow up uh, a lot of, in large part, thanks to scream and to Wednesday. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and Wednesday I, it's season two ought to be coming out soon. It should be coming out soon. I don't know when it's supposed to come out, but it should be, it should be relatively soon. So, uh, but yeah, so, Tim Burton obviously is familiar with her. He kind of knows how she works and how best to fit her into the story because this is very much his, go-to i mean this is what he does so incredibly well so now 
we get the big guy, Beetle, Beetlejuice, played by Michael Keaton. The biggest hurdle that this movie had, and if you don't remember it, if you haven't watched the first one in a long time, go back and watch it. The character of Beetlejuice in the first one is just this incredibly, like, just kinetic character where he is always moving. He's making these big, huge yeah. movements. And the biggest hurdle they have is Michael Keaton is now 73. He was like 37 back when this movie was made. Yeah, yeah. Capturing that physical energy was never going to be possible in this. But what he, what Michael Keaton, and look, he's not. He's not as nearly as active in this. But what he is, right. he has, he's what he's replacing with all just that, all that movement and all that energy that he has in his body, he's replacing it with just the a huge personality of the character yeah. Beetlejuice, and it doesn't really miss a beat. At least it didn't for me. No, I agree. It felt like pretty similar. Part of the reason is so smartly that they did thirty five years ago. He was look old. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know when he, like you said, he's thirty seven. He's wearing makeup that makes him look like an old character. So it it works perfectly yeah. to bring him in today. And this is another thing. I'm still shocked it took this long for the sequel to happen. It was just right there. Well, they've they've tried on numerous yeah, occasions right. to bring it back. Yeah, it sounds like Michael Keaton really wanted to do it multiple times. Which is odd because when you go back and you look at the history of the first film, Tim Burton couldn't get anybody to play in this film. Everybody he approached, yeah. it took a it took a ton of like meeting with him, like phone calls what wouldn't work yeah. it, he had to like get in the room and like explain to everybody what his vision for this thing was because everybody he talked to originally to play Beetlejuice didn't want to do it the studio eventually suggested Michael Keaton and when Michael Keaton initially is like no I'm not going to do that I don't know what this is what is this thing you're talking about I don't get this yeah. and when he sat in a room with him and kind of explained to him that this is a guy who's this man out of time or something like that I don't remember exactly what it was that he said to him this is when Michael, once you kind of sat down with him and you're like, oh, okay, because the first Beetlejuice film is the first real, like, Tim Burton film. Yeah, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a Tim Burton film, but it didn't have the thumbprints and the fingerprints of Tim Burton like this film did. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I can see what you're saying, yeah. So, you don't really, so when somebody's trying to tell you, like, when you think of, when somebody says that's a Tim Burton film, you, you automatically get thoughts in your head. We didn't have that in right. 1987 when they were getting ready to make the first yeah. Beetlejuice. Nobody had any idea yeah. what that actually meant. And so, the, it, selling people on this was really difficult. And so, Michael Keaton now, really, you know, he wanted to revisit the character for a long time, which is so odd because he didn't want to play it. It took him a long time to get convinced to play it the first time. So, uh, but yeah, it they were there have been talks about this. Apparently, there was the whole Dolores thing, I think, comes from like the original one of the original concepts was going to be like Beetlejuice and Love, I think. Um, there was going to be a Beetlejuice in Hawaii or Beetlejuice in Paradise or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. I would love that one. That, <laughs> that one should have happened. Uh, so this is, like I said, they have tried on numerous occasions to get this to get this sequel done, and it doesn't actually happen until uh, the last couple of years. So, uh, but yeah, it's 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 really it is a lot of fun. Um, Let's talk about Willem Dafoe's character, Wolf Jackson, who is oh, an actor that they remind us on numerous occasions. He is actually an actor. He's not actually a cop, but he is doing all the TV cop things throughout the course of this. What were your thoughts of Willem? Hilar- hilarious, man. I love Willem Dafoe. He's fantastic in any role, but anytime he gets to play comedy, yeah. he's just so damn funny. Yeah, he's just absolutely chewing up everything that he's in. Mm-hmm. Sure. He, he really is. I mean, and you know he's got his brain kind of half exposed and yeah, it's yeah. just absolutely fantastic uh watching this and i hope we get bloopers because William defoe supposedly is a guy that likes to get tickled <laughs> so i bet there's some very good bloopers of him right. laughing yeah I, i'm sure there are uh th- there's probably quite a few justin Thoreau. Yeah. we I haven't talked about him we talked about him a little bit like i said that one didn't work quite as well for me it worked better for you uh yeah. I just thought he was really funny. He was funny. Don't get me wrong. He was funny. Just that because whole storyline. Just I did just didn't jive with it. The, I can see the storyline. The thing that's so impressive is if you've ever heard anyone talk about Justin Thoreau, he's supposed to be like the coolest person alive. <laughs> For him to be able to play right. this weirdo, it's just so creepy. Yeah, and like it's 
it may be the best acting performance of all time because, like I said, everyone says you will never meet a Colo person in life if you've yes. ever met just throwing, you know. But, like, he, the one scene where he was like, let me break the news. That's, yeah, that was the one I, that's the one that I she could have a, well, I forgot how he said, like, a really masculine man, yeah. you know. And I also, just like, oh. I, I just lost my own grandmother, as, uh, grandfather as well. I was like, really? I don't remember you losing grandfather. Well, it was 40 years ago, but that's the my inner child yeah. or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, that was. was so funny. Yeah, it was. It was absolutely hilarious. So. Um, Anyway, uh, let's. We talked enough about Monica Bellucci's storyline. I don't want to spend any, any more time on it. It, it. Like I said, it's the one thing I think that just kind of it kept this movie from becoming a great film to me. I thought it was a really good film, yeah. but it could have been a great film if they had done just taken that entire thing completely out of it. So, uh, oh, let's talk about all the shrinking head guys. Uh, oh, Bob, Bob, and all the other ones that are there. I, like I said, it, justice for Bob. Just, Bob shouldn't have died. No, Bob shouldn't have died. But what's just so? I was very upset about that. They were so great. What was so funny about this is like this is just a little thing that was from the original one that they just yeah. decided to run with in the in the, in the new one because it's not a huge part of no, of the it original. Works so well. Yeah, it does. It and works especially well. when Beetlejuice is talking to them and they just act like they're talking to him back and like right. they have a communication. Yeah. going on it's just so funny it is it really is i like i said i absolutely loved it it was fantastic so uh all right so then we have kind of the person who is i would say the main villain this is arthur conti plays who plays jeremy how long did it take you to figure out this kid is dead uh when he said so when he said uh, sorry about the fence, he's like, oh, my parents won't even notice. I was like, oh, he's a ghost. See, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't catch. I didn't catch it. I, until... I caught that. I, I caught that immediately. And then you immediately see his parents, and they're weird. I was like, oh, that's yeah, when I. That's ghost. when I caught it. it. Was when he's walking her through the house, and the parents they do they make sure we don't see the faces of the parents because that means there's yeah. something weird going on with the parents. And I was like, okay, I'm thinking this guy's probably actually dead and he for certain actually is dead so uh that's when i was caught on like i said because the whole thing of like when he picks up his or when astrid picks up his manual for the recently deceased or whatever it is that that thing is called yeah. uh I, you know i could believe it like because the the guy in the first one picked up the manual in in the first film so it's like the fact that this got sold at a, a yard sale that could have made sense i could have seen that that the book from the original one uh was sold off in a yard sale at some point like i didn't catch yeah, this until yeah, this that ma- you, yeah i didn't catch that this could, until that, that makes sense yeah. i didn't catch this until we get to the point where he's taking her through the house when i see the parents that's when i'm like oh he's actually a ghost uh and i wasn't completely certain if this was a bad guy but the moment that he tells her he wants like she could be take him. She could be the reason that he could come back. Is like, oh, okay, this probably isn't going to go down a road, that road that's really, really good for him. Uh, we get the backstory uh, from what is the girl woman's name? Uh, from Jane Butterfield, played by Amy Nuttall. Uh, no, she was in the first movie, right? I think that she was the daughter of the of the woman who was trying to sell the house after they died i think that's the case i think that's yeah i may be wrong about that but uh because there was she had a very similar there was a very similar character to right 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 like i I think she was the daughter in in that first one so i could be wrong about that but yeah you're right it is i'm looking up okay the daughter of the first films jane butterfield senior Jane yeah. Butterfield Sr. <laughs> I didn't even know that they did that. But um uh, but yeah, so like we get the backstory for for uh, for Jeremy in this and basically she she explains that he killed his parents. Uh how did he die? Oh, that's right, he slipped out of the out of the treehouse when the yeah. cops were trying to to apprehend him. So this is how all three of them end up dead, and this is where basically like the main action, the main plot points of the story are because now now we've got to get Beetlejuice more involved. Uh, she goes to Beetlejuice uh, to try to get his help, and this is where everything starts to kind of devolve and everything. Uh, I mentioned this a second ago, Arthur Conti. This is really his first role. The only other thing that he has done, he was in one episode of House of the Dragon in the first season, and he was like a page or something like that. Didn't had yeah. tiny, minor, maybe not even had a line, in it, if I had to guess. But this is really his first role. Uh, 
first project. And he was so good. Yeah, I kept thinking I'd seen this kid from someplace, but he was really, really good. I was really impressed by it. Uh, he has some Steve Harrington vibes, don't you think? Yeah, I could see that. That's that's not a bad. That's not a bad comparison. I think I think that's a pretty good way to go with it. I was a little apprehensive when they first started this. I was like, I really don't want a teen romance in this. I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. And then when they start to kind of reveal where it's coming, like, okay, this is okay. I'm better with that. I I like where they're yeah. taking this thing and where he's actually going to end up being the villain in throughout the course of this. So, well, also let me mention when he was so into '90s stuff. Yeah, I was like, oh god, this guy was a teen. It's about the '90s. So, uh, like I said, he was really good. I was impressed by him. Uh, he, I actually thought for a second that somehow uh, Lydia and him were going to have a connection, which would have uh, been yeah. kind of fun if it they had been gone that road. Yeah. Yeah, they, could, they could have. Uh, the only thing I never really could quite catch is why she – they never explain why she can't see her former husband and Astrid's – dad they just he just says i mean when they when they they finally find him they he says i know you can't see me but i've been watching i don't like you know the way that you were fighting they don't really explain why she at least i don't think they explain why uh, i don't remember that too but you're right that should have uh they should have told us why maybe i missed that maybe i did too but it like i said there was quite a bit going on so uh but yeah basically the way this thing resolves uh you've got at the end of it uh, they finally get they finally get Astrid out. Uh, Beetlejuice, I guess, sends Jeremy to hell. Is kind of what it looked like he yeah, was doing. What it looked like to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he kind of like sends him to hell, and you got Lydia, a- Astrid. They make a run for it. They get they get back to the real world, and this is when she's supposed to marry Justin Thoreau's character Rory, uh, and then Beetlejuice steps in, obviously, because he made her sign a contract saying. I'm going, you have to marry me if you're going to, if I want to help you save your daughter. Uh, and this is, like I said, this is kind of the, uh, the wrap up. Uh, you've got all the, you, the, we revisit the thing that they did with Deo where yeah. he makes everybody sing. It's just an absolutely fun finale. Yes. Uh, and look, the one thing that just is so, about this, in t- about both of these films, it's a good movie, but when Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice comes on, it just, takes it to it just naturally up. another level and and I, I don't i sort of recognize the MacArthur park song yeah it was from R- richard harris the actor i didn't realize yeah. he was a singer as well that song is so funny in that scene it is like, it really the is way funny. everyone sings, it just fits perfectly also i love that uh delia had gotten killed by the snakes that was just that funny. was fantastic that was, yeah that was absolutely hilarious. So like when those snakes come, I was like, oh gosh, snakes! And when she says, oh yeah, yeah. I bought them, and I heard they had them defanged. Like that's probably not going to be the case. Uh, but yeah. yes, so she's dead. She's going to have to go to the to the afterlife. Uh, she hooks back up with her half eaten <laughs> husband. Uh, yeah. The Soul Train is fantastic. I love the Soul Train. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah, it was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and like I said, and this is where you know you get a, kind of an idea that Jenna and Astrid are going to be happy, and they're going to kind of figure things out. Uh, Rory and Dolores they get swallowed by. Uh, well, no, Rory didn't. Rory didn't get swallowed by. A yeah, sandworm. he did. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. He did, okay, he did. I couldn't remember. Uh, but they get swallowed by sandworms, so they're out of the picture at this point. So, like I said, uh, will they do a third one? Maybe. Uh, I mean, Michael Keaton. They so kind of set it up to one. They said, sure. yeah, they set it up where they could definitely go back to it if they wanted to. And this one's making a killer. Yeah. So that's let's talk about that real quick. Uh, One hundred ten million dollars domestic. I think it made like forty five million yeah. worldwide. This is on a hundred million dollar budget. So I mean, it's really already made back. It's 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 already made back its money. It's probably going to end up doing probably three hundred million if I had I to can guess. See word of mouth of this being good i could see this sticking around in halloween air time yeah. oh too. yeah that's true i didn't think about that that's it could it could really i take could off see then. this being in theater for a while yeah i i could too so like i said we're looking probably at 300 to 400 million dollars for this thing yeah my I theater so. was packed uh there was yeah mom was, an NPC. mom was it mom was i went to our smaller independent uh movie theater and so but it was it was busy yeah, this is. But also, uh, Alabama and Auburn were about to play. So let me uh, just say well, that. I live true. in Birmingham, Alabama. 
<laughs> kind of affects the movie theater. Yeah. Which is also, if you are a fan, always go when Alabama's playing it. Perfect time to see a movie. <laughs> you can stretch out. You can just enjoy yourself. Okay. Yeah. We went on Friday night at 715. We went to 715 showing it on Friday night. And like I said, my daughter and I, we went and it was packed. Uh, it was just absolutely... I mean, there were a few empty seats, but there weren't many. Uh, I did ask my daughter, I was like, which one did you like better? She liked this one better. Uh, but part of that was there were dead cats in this one uh, that were meowing. So oh. do you remember the dead cats? No, I don't remember when, the dead cats. Remind me where they were. It's there. They appear twice. There, It's in the waiting room where everybody's waiting. Oh, okay. And I kind of remember this now. And, uh... I guess it was oh, it was Jeffrey Jones's half-eaten body that sits on the couch yeah. next to the to the woman with yeah. the, with the dead cats on her. Uh, so my daughter absolutely loved that. But uh, uh, but and also I expect her to like this one more because it has Jenna Ortega in it. So like I said, I was expecting this one to be her favorite of the two. So a really good film. Like I said, I, I just yeah. I wish they would have taken out the whole Monica Bellucci thing and just kind yeah. of given that to some other people. But still, really good. Uh, I really really did enjoy this one. So. All right, let's go ahead and take a break and let's then give out our awards. All right, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we finish watching a film, we like to uh, give out six awards, all based on the six characters. Uh, friends, at the top of our list is a is the Rachel. Who is your Rachel for uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Uh, it's Michael King, because yeah. also... He's a big reason this movie got made yeah. because he really wanted to make it, and he started working with Tim Burton on the script as well. So right. thank you, Michael Keaton. Yeah, he's he's definitely the star of this because it's it's even if he's not on the film, I, we talked about this for a second. I think he is in on screen more for this one than yeah, he was I, the I previous think so one, too. but it's not a significantly more. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Michael Keaton is definitely the Rachel in this. The Joey, who's your Joey? The character you enjoy, the character you love. I, I went with uh, White and Ryder and Jenna Ortega. Yeah, I did here, too. Both. Yeah, yeah. That, that's an easy call for the, uh, for those two. So. Yeah. The Chandler, the one who made you laugh the most, is your Chandler. I went with Catherine yep. O'Hara and William Defoe. Okay, I put Willem Dafoe somewhere else, but I put Catherine O'Hara here. So uh, she was hysterical. She was. She was absolutely hysterical throughout the course of it. The Phoebe, who is your oddball of the bunch? I went with Justin Throw here again. Supposedly the coolest person has ever lived, playing a weirdo. I mean, he he makes perfect sense. This is where I put Willem Dafoe. This is where I put his character. He works there as well. Yeah. So just uh, he was just. I mean, look. The entire cast is odd. The entire thing is weird and yeah, odd. So yeah. you just kind of got to figure out like who stands out the most. Uh, the Monica, right. the person who's kind of an important character, the glue. Who is your Monica? I went with Bob, man. Bob was around <laughs> this the whole time, and he deserved better. Yeah, Bob deserved better. So I'm going with him as well. Because uh, I thought about uh, Charles, but I was like, you know, Jeffrey Jones, you don't deserve it. No, he doesn't deserve it. Uh, but the Ross. The least favorite character of uh, the least liked character of the film, who is your Ross? I went with Monica Bellucci, who actually deserves it, but I thought uh, we'll throw Arthur Conti in here as well. Although, yeah, that's about you know, for, an, for a for someone coming out, bravo, sir! You yeah. were fantastic. Yeah, he's really good. I was I was impressed by him. Like I said, this was he does have one credit for House of Dragon, but that's it was just one episode. Like I said, yeah. I don't even know that it had any lines in it, but uh, he was really good in this. It was, was like a page. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so good for him. All right. Yeah. Rating time here on the main attraction podcast. We have a five tier rating system at the top of our list is a succession. Beneath the succession is a lost middle of the road forest is friends. Beneath the friends is a full house and bottom barrel forest is a Baywatch. What are you rating? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm giving it a succession. This is the end of the summer movie series. This is a perfect way to end the summer movies. I, I had a fantastic time. If I watch this again, I may not like it as much, so I probably would go down to a loss. <laughs> but at that moment in the theater, I had a great time. 
I understand what you're saying about Monica Bellucci's character and some of Justice Throne, but I'm telling you at the moment, I thought I was watching one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's a loss for me. It's like I said, it could have been a succession had they just like gotten rid of the whole Monica Bellucci start, uh, plot line. Just like I said, just picked a movie. Uh, but it's still a really good movie. Like I said, I, this could have been one of my like top three films of the year uh, because the parts of it that I liked, I really liked that much. But the parts of it, there were parts of it that I just was like, I'm, I'm not. I don't like this part. It's boring me. I'd rather be with the other plot line. So uh, it's a, it's it's a loss. It's still like I said, really good, really fun movie. Uh, doing really well. Like I said, at the box office, doing pretty yeah. well among critics. Not like just like completely not not universally praised, but pretty well spoken by most people. Yeah. Uh, got a good score from the audience on Rotten Tomatoes. Got a pretty good score on IMDb. So like I said, people seem to be enjoying this thing. So. Uh, will they get a third one? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, Michael Keaton's 73, so I don't, I know. I don't know how. You, if you're going to do it, you better do it fast. So, uh, yeah, exactly. All right. Before we sign off on this thing, we want to do some recommendations for our listeners. What are some recommendations that you have? Yeah, so I watched a Netflix movie that's actually fantastic. I saw people talking about this movie, Rebel Ridge. It came out this weekend. Oh, I haven't even it heard is of it. a. Uh, it, it is uh, the the most known person is Don Johnson who plays a corrupt sheriff. Oh, okay. But it is about he's good at that young... nowadays. It's one yes, thing he plays yes. a lot of. Well, this was supposed to star John Boyega, but in the middle of filming, he just disappears because he wasn't enjoying himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it is. Uh, it's from the director who did a movie a few years ago called Green Room. It's like it's got Elijah Wood and. Yeah and uh patrick stewart where it's about like some punks that are like in a horror movie but anyway this is kind of like sort of like first blood it's about an ex-marine who comes to town to bail out his cousin Mm. and he's a young black guy and these police uh you know are really rude to him and make his life a living hell but they don't realize that he's uh there's a story behind it of course and I will tell you, this looks like it's going to be extremely violent. It really is, and it's more psychological and him uh, trying to, to beat them. And the young guy's name is Aaron Pierre, British actor I'd never seen before, fantastic. He's about to be in The Lion King, mm-hmm. um, so his career's taken off. So Don Johnson is the villain, uh, so I would highly recommend it. I saw the people from The Ringer talking about it. Rebel Ridge, it's on uh, Netflix, 7.1 rating on IMDb, <laughs> but it's like an action crime drama thriller. Really, really good. It's two hours, but I'm telling you, especially for a Netflix movie, it's it's really good. I would highly recommend it. Uh, the other things, A Quiet, a Quiet Place Day One is on uh, Paramount+. Plus. I really liked it. I thought Lapita Nuongo and Joseph Qu- Quinn were really good in this. Even if you haven't seen the Quiet Place movies with Emily Blunt, right. you could watch this. But I thought it was a fantastic continuance of this story and showing the prequel. I really liked it. And uh, Joseph Quinn, I was very excited about. He, he was uh, very good in this. And then Adam Sandler has a new comedy special called Adam Sandler, I Love You. Uh, and it's his love letter to like comedians mm. and people that have influenced his life. Really good, directed directed by one of the Safdie brothers. Uh, it's actually really funny. There's some time for the sounds kind of weird. I don't know if they did that on purpose early on. But besides that, I really liked it. Adam Sandler, uh, one of my favorite comedians of all time and does a great job. He sings a lot of songs, too. <laughs> I will warn you, of course, Rob Schneider shows up because, oh, yeah. you know, he has to show up. It's, you know, contracted in anything Adam <laughs> Seller does. But uh, it's it's great. Adam Seller is always good when he mixes his comedy and in, in, in his stand-up. So I love it. So Adam Seller, love you uh, on Netflix as well. All right. Uh, I got a couple things on Netflix. Then I got something on Hulu. First thing. A show that I just turned on just because I was like, I need something to watch, and I'm just kind of bored right now. Uh, I thought it'd be good. I thought it'd be uh, look pretty decent. I really, really enjoyed it. That is Chaos on Netflix. Uh, oh yeah, I've heard this is good. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. basically a modern telling of Greek mythology. It's got Jeff Goldblum uh, and a whole bunch of other people. I can't think of their names off the top of my head, but uh, Jeff Goldblum plays Zeus. 
And like I said, it basically takes the story of, uh, takes the story mythology, modernizes it, and it is just absolutely fantastic. I, like I said, I went into it thinking, oh, this looks pretty good. And it came out, you know, it came out on the other side of it is it's probably going to end up in my top 10 for the, for the year. It is oh, cool. absolutely fantastic. If you are a fan of, if you're a fan of Greek mythology, if you like reading those stories, and if you really liked uh, Boz Lerman's uh, retelling of Romeo and Juliet back in '96, this oh, wow. has kind of that same vibe to it. Uh, just to okay. give you a, a, an idea of what it was like, but like I said, I love this film. It, uh, this movie, this not movie, this television show. It's eight episodes. They go by really fast. Uh, like I said, really good. I enjoyed that a whole lot. Uh, the other thing I'm um, recommending from Netflix, Terminator Zero. I haven't finished it, but okay. uh, there, you know, it's it's honestly probably one of the best things. It's probably the best thing Terminator related that's come out in this century. Now, now that's not saying a whole lot because <laughs> there hasn't been a lot of good stuff on Terminator related in yeah. this century. But uh, this is really really good. Like I said, I have not finished it. I need to finish it. But it's got uh, Jeffrey Wright doing the voice of one of the characters. It's got um, Timothy Oliphant doing the voice of the Terminator in this. He's not. Oh wow, yeah. really? Yeah, it, it, the Terminator isn't in it a whole lot, but he's doing the voice of. Um, uh, the Terminator in this. Well, that's cool. Uh, so, like I said, if you if you like it, it's anime. Uh, I know I do kind of bump up against anime sometimes. I, there are some that I like, and this one I really do enjoy. It's been it's been really good. Like I said, I'm not finished it. I need to finish it, but I have enjoyed this one thoroughly. Uh, last thing I want to recommend. Uh, it's only two episodes in. The first episode of the uh, fourth is this the fourth season of Only Murders in the Building? Yeah, fourth season. Yeah, 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 I need to watch it. So. Uh, the first episode is one of the best episodes of the entire run this this season. Wow. It's really, really good. The second episode's still good. Don't get me wrong, because I watch it too. But that first episode of this season was just absolutely phenomenal. I was so impressed by it. Uh, this season, like I said, has gotten off to a really good start. It's really good. I liked the third season, uh, but I thought... That one, the ending wasn't quite as well done as the first two seasons were. I thought yeah, it was. I, can see that. It, well, I won't talk about it here. We may eventually talk about this show at some point. But once they reveal, like, once they kind of clue in on one character, like, oh, I know how they're actually going to play this thing out at, at some point. Uh, but anyway, like I said, the, this these first two episodes have been really, really good of uh, Only Murders in the Building. It's This show has just been phenomenal from the moment it first aired uh, three or four years ago, and it just keeps going on. It's just absolutely great. So uh, I guess that wraps us up. Is there anything else you want to share before we sign off? Yeah, appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I will echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.